everyone and welcome to this video by IntelliPad. In this video, we're going to talk about hashing in data structures. Hashing is used in order to efficiently retrieve and store data in an array. The goal of hashing is to utilize a hash function to reduce a given key to a smaller integer, which is then used as an index in a table known as a hash table. Before getting into what hashing is and how it works, let us take a peek at the agenda of this video. Firstly, what is hashing? Then, what are the use cases of hashing? Then, we deal with an example of hashing. Then, we talk about what a hashing key is. What are the types of hashing keys? Then, what are hash functions and hash tables? Then, we talk a little about what are the characteristics of hashing? What are various operations in hashing? Then, what are the different collision hashing techniques? Then, we talk about how does hashing get bigger of one time complexity? Then, we talk about what is rehashing? And with that, we'll conclude. But before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any updates from us. Let us begin by understanding what hashing is. In hashing, we begin by creating a hash for the input. Then we use the key to store the element in the hash table. Key value pairs make up the hash table. It is employed when quick searching or element insertion is necessary. It enhances the effectiveness of retrieval and search. Other names for hashing are message digest function and hashing algorithm. Let us take a look at the use cases of hashing. First, we have data retrieval. Hashing turns object data into a meaningful integer value using algorithms or functions. Once these items have been identified on an object data map, hash filters can be used to filter searches. For instance, programmers use hash tables to store data in the form of key and value pairs, such as customer record. Keys are used to identify data and are fed to the hash function, while hash codes are translated to integers of a fixed size. Then we have digital signatures. Hashing facilitates the encryption and decryption of digital signatures which are used to authenticate message senders and recipients, in addition to enabling faster data retrieval. In this scenario, the recipient receives the digital signature separately after it has been altered by a hash function prior to the hash value or message digest. The fundamental idea behind all hashing algorithms is to convert data into a value that can be used as an index into an array. SHA-1, MD5 and Murmur hash are a few common hashing algorithms. Here is an example to explain hashing in detail. Assume we wish to map a list of string keys to a list of string values. Map the nation's capitals for instance. Let us imagine that we want to save the data from table 1 of this map. The hash will appear as follows if the hash function is only used to calculate the length of the string. We put Russia in the 6th position within the keys array and Moscow on the 6th index since Russia's hash code is 6. Now we move on to what a hashing key is. The raw data that must be hashed in a hash table is called the hashing key. The function that covers the hash key into the hash value is carried out by the hashing algorithm. The hash value is the result of running the hash key through the hashing algorithm. It is given by hash key equals key value mod number of slots in the hash table. What are the types of hashing keys? The various kinds of hashing keys include public key. Public key is also known as asymmetric key and is solely employed in data encryption. The public key being an open key makes the method somewhat slower. Public keys are frequently used for online session security, Bitcoin transfers and cryptographic operations. However, a public key works in conjunction with a group of private keys maintaining the level of security as a whole. Then we have private key. Both encryption and decryption rely on the private key. Any party that sends or receives Encrypted sensitive information shares a key. The private key is also referred to as symmetric 
because both parties share it. Typically, a private key is a long, improbable string of bits that is generated at random or artificially random. SSH SSH employs a public key as well as a private key. SSH is a set of keys which can be used to decrypt and authenticate remote communications. The public key is available to the stakeholders as well as the distance servers. Then we move on to what hash tables and hash functions are. What is a hash table? An associative data structure called a hash table holds information as associated keys. Data from hash tables is stored in an array format where each value is given a distinct index. Knowing the needed data's index allows us to rapidly retrieve it. As a result, regardless of data quantity, inserting and searching data is very quick. Elements are kept in an array and produced in an index in a data structure using hashing techniques in a hash table. What is a hash function? In hash functions, a key is converted into a hash key using a predetermined technique. A hash key can be used to create length restricted data known as hash values. The original character sequence is still reflected in the hash value even if it is often less than the original. The recipient gets both the hash value and the digital signature after the transfer of the digital signature. The hash value produced by the receiver and the one obtained along with the message using the same hash technique are compared. If messages hash values perfectly match, they can be forwarded without any issues. Now let us take a look at few of the characteristics of hash functions. Firstly, collision free. A hash function is collision free because it possesses two essential characteristics. The function should transmit equally likely inputs to all realistic outputs first and foremost. The function must also be deterministic in order to ensure that it always produces the same results when given the same input. It is guaranteed by a collision free hash function that no two input hashes map to the same output hash. Next, property to be hidden. A hash function is used to convert data of any size to data of a specific size. This is a property to be hidden. A good hash function should make it challenging to infer the input value from the output, which is one of its fundamental characteristics. In other words, it ought to be challenging to identify two distinct inputs that result in the same output. All potential output values should be equally distributed. As a result, each possible input will have a distinct output and the outputs will be distributed equally across the range of potential values. Lastly, puzzle friendly. Hash functions should be acceptable for puzzles so that they can be used in them. It should be difficult to choose an input that will produce a specific outcome. Determining the input from a range that is as diverse as is practical is therefore recommended. Let us understand this with a simple code here. Initially, we take a boolean array called hash table to map its elements. Then, a function called insert is defined taking parameters array and n. Now, we implement a for loop with a condition that if the element of the array is greater than or equal to 0, meaning hash table of a of i of 0 equals 1, then it's true. Else, hash table of absolute value of a of i of 1 is true, which means we take the absolute value of a of i. Similarly, here we have defined a search function for which if x is greater than or equal to 0, then if a certain hash table of x of 0 equals 1, the function returns true, else it returns false. And for the case where x is less than 0, we take the absolute value of x and check the condition where if hash table of x of 1 equals 1, the function returns true, or else 
it returns false coming to the int main part we have defined the elements in the array and n which equals to the size of the array divided by the size of one of the element in the array now we call the insert function here we are trying to find the element and if the element that we are trying to find is in the hash table which is found using the search function we print that the element is present else we print that the element is not present what are the various operations in hash functions insert the value stored in a hash table after the hash has been calculated is used as the key next delete it computes the hash and resets the value for that key that is stored in the hash table lastly search it determines the hash locates and returns the value kept for that key in the hash table hash collisions occur when two or more inputs are assigned the same hash table keys let us take a look at different collision hacking techniques first open hashing or separate chaining linked list is used to implement the most popular collision hashing method any two or more components are chained together into a single linked list known as chain where they collide at the same point in this we link all the linked list components that hash to the same slot let us consider an example of a simple hash function where the key equals key mod table size and in a hash table with size 7 hash of 27 equals 27 mod 7 that is 6 and hash of 130 equals 4 if we have added a new element it will likely be indexed at 4 which is 18 so 18 mod 7 gives us 4 the worst case scenario for separate chaining is when all the keys receive the same hash value like we have seen in this example here and have added it into the same linked list by employing a good hash function we can prevent this next we have closed hashing or open addressing unlike linked list open addressing stores all the entry records within the array itself the idea that an item's hash value does not specify its location or address is known as open addressing the array is examined first before calculating the hash index of the hashed value starting with the hash index in order to add a new item the entry value is placed there if the hashed index space is empty otherwise some probing sequences are employed until an empty slot is discovered the probe sequence is the method used to cycle across entries the intervals between next entry slots or probes in various probe sequences can be changed let's talk about linear probing linear probing includes inspecting the hash table sequentially from the beginning if the site requested is already occupied a different one is searched the distance between each probe in a linear probing is typically fixed generally to a value of 1 the formula for linear probing is index equals key mod hash table size and the sequence is displayed here next we have quadratic probing the distance between subsequent probes or entry slots is the only difference between linear and quadratic probing you must begin traversing until you find an available hashed index slot for an entry record if the slot is already taken by adding each succeeding value of any arbitrary polynomial in the original hashed index the distance between slots is determined the formula for quadratic probing is index equals index mod hash table size and the sequence is displayed here then we have double hashing the time between probes is determined by yet another hash function double hashing is an efficient technique for decreasing clustering the increments for the probing sequence are computed using an extra hash function the formula for double hashing is first hash key plus i into second hash key whole mod size of the table and the sequence 
goes as follows. Now that we have a clear understanding of this concept, let us understand how hashing gets big O of 1 complexity. Based on the above illustrations, one might ask how hashing might have big O of 1 if multiple items map to the same location. The solution to this is simple. By using a different chaining approach, using a linked list as an example, we can leverage the load factor to make sure that each block saves the maximum number of entries which is typically less than the load factor. Additionally, this load factor is constant in practice. Searching in 10 or 20 components becomes routine. The elements are rehashed using a bigger hash table size if the average number of items in a block is greater than the load factor. So what is rehashing? Rehashing is a method for resolving collisions. It is a strategy that involves resizing the table, that is, doubling the size of the table by making a new table. A prime value for the table's overall size is preferred. There are some circumstances where rehashing is necessary, such as when the table is entirely full, when the table is halfway full, we use quadratic probing, when overflow related insertion failures occur. In these cases, we must use hash functions to recalculate the positions of the entries in the old database before moving them into the new table. With the help of hash tables, we can insert, search, delete in big O of 1 time complexity. Hash tables are widely used for making our code more efficient and faster. Hashing offers a more flexible and secure way to retrieve data than any other data structure can. Hashing allows you to search through lists and arrays more rapidly so that you may use it to quickly locate the index of the desired item with a minimal number of operations. Since messages cannot be changed while being transmitted, hashing is essential for information security. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati. The course link of which is given in the description below.